Hello, I'm Anne Lovegrove and um, it's very much a pink nose day, it's jolly chilly here, but we want to give you a very warm welcome to Christchurch this morning. Um, we have a number of, of stream services that if you go onto our website you can watch it, one at 8.30, at 10.30 and at 6.30. And then there is a live but small service at 10:30, uh, and um, when all regulations and restrictions are adhered to. Our Zoom prayer gathering, which was last uh, uh, last Tuesday, had over 100, uh, no, 79 participants, and that was really great. And please do put a note in your diary for the second uh, Tuesday of next month and zoom in, and we can pray together. 
there's a suspension of youth and uh, children's online activities over half term so please do note that and here's something a, a message from Bree our children's minister and I better read this otherwise I might get it wrong um, so all stars go radio show will be our, over half term from the 15th to the 19th of February there's a whole week of kids content that isn't on screens. Families can listen in while painting, doing puzzles, eating breakfast in the garden or streaming in the kitchen on your smart device. It has a faith-filled content with competitions and worship and importantly will be lots of fun. If families want more information they can go to the All Star Kids Club webpage. And now over to our children's team for the children's special slot. Good morning, Christchurch. First of all, I want to say a happy Valentine's Day and welcome to our church family news this week. I'm Alistair and I'm the Assistant Children's Minister here at Christchurch and I'm continuing our Armour of God series. And so, so far we've looked at loads of different aspects of the armour of God and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another one. This one is all about hats and I know it's very cold right now so we have to wear a hat. This is my hat that I'll be wearing up the cards and it keeps my hair nice and warm and then in the summer I'll be wearing a different hat. This one keeps the sun out Toonami, yeah, there we go. But there's lots of different hats we can wear. If you were a king, you might wear this hat. See, not this one, be a bit more expensive than this one. But yeah, this is a hat that a king might wear. If you were a sumo wrestler, you might wear this hat. Let me get it on. Oh, yeah, if you've been at like a sumo wrestling, yeah, not very comfortable. If you're a sumo wrestler, you might wear that one. If you were a court jester, you might wear this little headpiece, like this one. If you are, if you're Santa, you might wear this hat. There we go. Ho, ho, ho. If you were Adam, trying to be really cool and look like an old man, you might wear this hat. And if you've seen Josh, our new miniature trainee, he likes wearing hats like this. Cool. Yeah, those are sort of hats you might wear. But what hat would we wear in our armour of God? I've got, I've got a little bag here, repping Christchurch Chorleywood. Let's see, we've got a helmet. Let me put it on. Do you think it suits me? Leave a note in the comments. This is the helmet of salvation. And what does salvation mean? Well, salvation ultimately means that we have been saved. Jesus died on the cross for us. How good is that? Yes, he died for the people then, but he died for us now. And for the people yet to be born years in the future, he also died for them. Salvation is quite a big word, but when we say we've been saved, that's what we mean. It means we have salvation in Jesus Christ. And so, yes, you could say, so if I was to put the armour of God on every day, what would it mean to put on the helmet of salvation every day? And ultimately, it's a reminder, a reminder that we have our salvation, our identity in the cross of Christ. The enemy will try and whisper things to us, being like, you're not saved. Jesus, he wasn't God. He was just a person 2,000 years ago that died on a cross. But we believe that that isn't true. We believe that Jesus is our Lord and our Saviour, and that our salvation is in him. So by daily putting on the helmet of salvation, we remember that Jesus died for us, died for our sins, that Jesus loved us. He loves us so much that he died on the cross for us. And that ultimately, 
By daily putting on the helmet of salvation, we remember that through him we have eternal life. That yes, we will die one day, but that isn't the end. That we will have eternal life in heaven with him. And that is good news. And that is good news that we want to share with people around us. We want to be telling our friends in the playground. Or growing up, we want to be telling our friends in the workplace that we have salvation in Jesus and that you too can have salvation in Jesus. And at Christ Church, in a few weeks' time, we're hosting an Alpha course, which is a course where people can learn more about this salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. And so grown-ups, if you've got any friends who don't know Jesus, why not invite them along? If every single person at Christchurch invited one person along to the Alpha course, we would have loads of people on the Alpha course. We'd have to upgrade the Zoom account and pay more money for it. So invite more people along to the Alpha course. And kids, okay, maybe you might not be able to invite your friends, it's hosted past your bedtime, but why not invite them to tune in to our services? Tune into what we're doing with the kids' work. And in the summer, we've got Detonate, whether it will be online or in person. That is an opportunity for you to invite your friends to join in the salvation that we have. Because yes, we put on this armour of God daily, and yes, we have the helmet of salvation. But it's not a helmet that we just keep, it's a helmet that we give away. And so my challenge is to you, to grown-ups, who are you going to invite to the Alpha Course? To kids watching, who are you going to invite to Detonate? Who are you going to pass on the helmet of salvation to? I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you loved us so, so much that you would send your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And that through him dying on the cross and through us believing in him as our Lord and Saviour, we have ultimate redemption. We have salvation. We have eternal life. And help us to pass that on to everybody around us. Ultimately, Everybody who doesn't know Jesus, we want to tell them about how amazing you are, how you saved us, and how through you we have life to its fullest. Amen.
Well, a very warm welcome to our 10.30 service today. Wherever you are, whether at home in the parish or across the globe, it's lovely to be with you. We are all one church family. And I'm Terence Russoff, the curate here at Christchurch, and it's my pleasure to be leading the service today. And we begin with an opening prayer. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we lift up our world to you with all its troubles. But we know that you are a good God. You know you are a God that loves us. And we now just come before you to praise your mighty name and worship you together. Amen. Well, we now come to a time of confession. So let's just pause for a moment and just bring before the Lord those things for which we need to say sorry for and for ask his forgiveness. The Apostle Paul says, Be imitators of God. Love as Christ loved. Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So let us confess our sins to God who forgives us in Christ. And we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now hear this comforting assurance of God's forgiveness. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And knowing God's forgiveness, let's say together this joyful anthem of praise from Psalm 100. And we stand as we say this. We say together. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. But we remain standing as we draw near to God in worship with two songs, recognising his presence with us. And as we enter into worship, some words from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 29. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Let's worship the Lord in song.
Let us pray. To the words, God of mercy, your response is, hear us as we pray. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says this, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, he the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. God, who is God alone, we pray for all world leaders that they may have wisdom to know and courage to do what is right. As they work to improve international relationships, may they find creative ways to effect reconciliation among the nations. May they also discern ways by which they may work together to share resources of food, education, shelter, and healthcare. Especially we pray that in this time of the pandemic, there will be a generosity of spirit in seeking to help those in dire need. We continue to pray for those who suffer as a result of war, the injured and disabled, the homeless and the hungry, and those who mourn for their dead in Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Yemen. In particular, we pray for the people of Myanmar after their recent coup, asking for a peaceful outcome for that country. We pray too for the government of India in their efforts to bring relief to those affected by damaging floodwaters in the state of Ut Uttarakhand. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Faithful God, we pray for this, our nation. We pray for our Queen as she continues to witness to her strong faith. We pray for our government as they seek to deal with the crisis of coronavirus. Give them your wisdom and discernment, good advice, and a desire to help all areas of our society. We ask that we will commit to pray for those in authority. Enable us to seek to help our fellow citizens in this very difficult time. Help us to be generous, kind, prayerful, actively seeking to do good to others. As we give thanks for our homes, we lift your mercy and care, those living without a home in our land. We pray for those who try to help them, all voluntary organisations who seek to provide housing and aid. God of mercy, hear us, as we pray. Loving God, pour out your blessing upon the ministers and lay people of your church in every land. We pray for our archbishops and for our bishops in this diocese 
Alan, Michael and Richard. We remember before God our own staff team here at Christchurch and especially David and Mary Hall and their family. We lift before you all our mission partners that you will protect and bless them. Alan and Maylin Ellard, Elizabeth Broomhall, Bob and Mary Hopkins, Colin and Aikiki Mead, Teresa Wilson, Tom and Joanna Apple and their family. We pray too for the many Christians persecuted for their faith. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Healing God, we commend to your loving care those who face continuous pain or sickness or are suffering from COVID-19. May those who care for them be given all the resources needed, those who are NHS staff, carers, family members. Despite experiencing tiredness, we pray that you will give them the strength to persevere with love and kindness. Show us ways in which we can support both them and their loved ones. And we pray for bereaved families, that loving Father and healing God, you will bring to them your comfort. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Amen. Our reading comes from Matthew uh, chapter 8 and verses 1 to 4 from the ESV version of the Bible. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving Lord, we pray that you will help us as we study our passage of scripture together. Through it, we ask that you will enable us to gain greater insight as to why Jesus came to this earth and how his acts, his words, his sacrifice affects each one of us. In his name we pray, amen. Well, today is Valentine's Day, and it's a day when traditionally couples, or those who want to be couples, send cards, um, exchange gifts. I've got a Brexit valentine here for you. And it says this, For you, I'll never Brexit. Ours might be a complex thing, but you should know I'll never exit. When it comes to you, I'm a staunch remainer, a let's stay the samer. I'm a customs union, a free trade zone, you give me your troubles, I'll make them my own. A single currency of different needs, but shared goals of one love around twin souls. Issues we might have, it's true, but my vote is always to be with you. Today we're going to learn about an act of love, an act of love given by the one who loves us and cherishes us more than anyone else ever could. 
Now, since the COVID pandemic started last year, the government issued a number of slogans to help us to keep safe. So we had stay alert, control the virus, save lives. The most recent though is this, and it's the shortest of all so far, hands, face, space. To help us to remember the lessons we'll learn from this passage today, we're going to use each part of that slogan, but in a slightly different order. First of all, hands. The large crowd that had been with Jesus on the mountain followed him to the town of Capernaum, which was in the north side of the Sea of Galilee. It was then that a leper came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. But he wasn't referring to the process of washing of hands, of course. When a person caught leprosy, there was not only the awful physical problems of the disease, it affected the person both socially and spiritually. In the book of Leviticus and chapter 13, all this is explained. The person with such an infectious disease must wear torn clothes, let his hair be kept unkempt, cover the lower part of his face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as he has the infection, he remains unclean. He must live alone. He must live outside the camp. The reason for this harsh treatment was to protect other people from contamination, something like we've experienced in the past year. The term unclean means that this man was not only isolated, but was unable to participate in and find comfort in any religious act because of his disease. He was therefore alone. He was without any kind of cure. He was deprived of forgiveness. He was in a hopeless situation with no way out. Somehow or the other, the leper had discerned the authority and power of Jesus. Consequently, he kneels before him and calls him Lord. At that moment, he doesn't beg for healing. Instead, he humbly says, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. When we, with honesty, look into our hearts, we become aware too that we are unclean. But it's nothing to do with our personal hygiene. The expression unclean means that from birth, all of us have been tainted by sin, just as surely as many beautiful sea corals are tainted by pollution. The good news is that there is a remedy for our uncleanness. Like the leper, we too need to come to Jesus, recognizing our need for cleansing and forgiveness, and he will make us clean. Jesus, the promised one, the Saviour, did this by dying on the cross. On the cross, he willingly sacrificed himself simply because there was no other way for us to become good enough for a perfect and righteous God. By our own efforts, there is absolutely nothing we can do about our sinfulness. However hard we try, whether it's being 
charitable with our money, looking after the vulnerable, even going to church. Those are laudable acts, but they aren't sufficient. It requires us to come to God and to say with humility, like the leper, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And like him, place our trust in the God who loves us and who sent his Son that we might be whole and healed. If you'd like to know a bit more about what being clean before God means, may I encourage you to go to our church website and click on the Alpha Course link. Through an Alpha Course, you'll be able to discover the claims of Christianity and find the way to personal faith in Jesus Christ. Secondly, Jesus defied convention and safety when he touched the leper. He certainly didn't keep the space rule. Full of compassion for the man, verse 3, Jesus speaks, we find Jesus' response to the leper's question about whether he would heal him. This is the Lord's response. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. It's likely that the crowd who'd followed Jesus would have given the man a very wide berth and would have been shocked by Jesus actually touching him. People would have run away when they saw a leper, including the priests and religious people. Jesus had a very different approach. He didn't heal the man from a distance, even two meters away, but chose to touch him instead. We must wonder what the leper thought as Jesus reached out his hand and placed it upon him. It's certain that doing so would have shown him more care than anyone else ever had in a long time. Undoubtedly, it moved him. The Son of God had been willing to touch the man who was deemed to be untouchable. A week or so ago, Sir Captain Tom Moore sadly died of COVID-19. On the 6th of April, at the age of, uh, at the 6th of April last year, at the age of 99, he began to walk the 100 lengths of his 25 meter back garden using his walking frame. When he began, he hoped to raise a thousand pounds for the NHS by his 100th birthday on the 30th of April. We might question why it was that such a frail man decided to do such a, tre a strenuous walk. The answer is given in Captain Tom's own words. He had been so touched by the NHS team who had treated him with compassion for health problems in the past that he wanted to do something for them. He understood how COVID-19 had brought so many heavy pressures upon all those working in the NHS. When the public heard of Captain Tom's actions, they were so touched by his efforts that over 32 million pounds was raised. Today, when we hear this story of just one account of Jesus' kindness and care, does it similarly touch our hearts? Are we grateful to the one 
we call Lord. So much so that we are constantly moved to thank him. And does this prompt us also to want to share our resources with others? In Luke's Gospel, there's another familiar story of Jesus' healing of leprosy. In this instant, it was the healing of ten lepers. Yet it was only one of them who came back to say thank you. Remembering that particular leper's act of thanksgiving, let's make it a habit to thank God for all that he has done for us and for the way he touches our lives each day. And lastly, face in the COVID slogan. The leper had to keep his face covered, much in the same way that we've had to wear masks for the past few months. The instructions in Leviticus are that he shall live alone, his dwelling shall be outside the camp. In what we've been through in these past months, we can empathise with the leper's situation. Many of us have had similar adversities in the sorts of problems we've had to deal with on our own or perhaps with very little help. When Jesus healed the leper, he told him to go and show himself to the priest. The priest would examine him to ensure that he really was free of leprosy. Leviticus 14, and there's loads and loads of verses in this chapter, it speaks of a, a special ritual for when a leper came to a priest, which included having to present animals for sacrifice. All these actions meant that he could now return to his community, that he was ritually clean and could now go to the synagogue and worship with others. From Jesus, the man had been given the hope of complete restoration. The other important reason why Jesus instructs the leper to see a priest is to proclaim to the religious leaders that someone much greater than Moses had come. It pointed them to the authority and power that Jesus possessed. Equally, this assures us that the same Messiah is not only able to deal with any burden we experience, but is able to deal with our sin, that we might be clean, that we might be restored. In a remote Swiss village stands a beautiful church. What made the church special was that it had the most amazing pipe organ, the best in the whole region. But something had gone wrong with the organ. It released the wrong tones and there were sounds of disharmony. Musicians and experts from around the world had tried to repair it, but no one could fix it. After some time had passed, an old man came to the church and asked the church staff why the organ wasn't in use. They replied to him that despite their best efforts, they just hadn't been able to find someone who could discern the fault in the organ. The old man asked the staff if, uh, if he could have a go. And since no other solution had been found, they agreed to let him try. The old man was left to do his work on the instrument. Then, after a while, miraculously and to their joy, 
they heard the pipe organ give off the best music ever. How did you manage to restore it when everyone else failed? They asked. He replied, it was I who built the organ. I created it and now I have restored it. In the same way, the God who created mankind has the power to make us new. In the words of Psalm 23, he is our good shepherd who restores our troubled souls. He is the good shepherd who promises that by faith in him, we shall dwell with him forever. He is the good shepherd whom one day we shall meet face to face. And he certainly is the one who gives real hope, not only now in these difficult circumstances, but for all eternity. Let's pray. Father God, whatever distress surrounds us, may we put our trust in you that we might each day experience your shalom, your peace and your healing. We praise you that through Christ's blood shed on the cross, we are made clean and whole. We ask that you will remind us of these blessings each day in the knowledge that you are our loving creator and merciful redeemer. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, in a moment, we'll be coming to our final song in which we take our offering to support the work and witness of the church family in this parish and further afield with our mission partners. Thank you so much for joining us today, wherever you are, here in, here in Chorleywood or across the globe. And do stay online for a few moments for a cyber copy. If you have a uh, Facebook or a YouTube account, why don't you send some greetings or best wishes or encouragements or some spiritual thoughts to each other. And before our final song, a closing blessing, taken from Ephesians chapter 3. May the God of his glorious riches strengthen us with power through the Spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, and we can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>